Gravestone Pokemon leave Freen, we left Guy's house who makes fun of your Pokemon's nicknames. I spent over 27,000 Pokey on... A, a rope? It was a really expensive rope, okay? We took the underground path from Lavender Town to Celadon City. We actually arrived in Celadon City. And this episode will be exploring Celadon City. Let's play a drinking game. Every time I say Celadon City, take a shot. Hey guys, it's Tomation. Welcome back to some more Pokemon Leaf Green. In the last episode, we went across Route 8 to make it here into Celadon City. In this episode, we'll be exploring this place. Celadon Mansion. So, the main gimmick with Celadon City is a lot of really big buildings with a lot of stuff to do inside of them. And a lot of people to talk to. One of the more important buildings is this one right here. Clefairy, get out of my way or I'll punch you in the face. There we go. If you want to talk to this old lady right here, you shouldn't spend all your money on drinks. Try this instead. And she'll give you the tea. Nothing beats first like some hot tea. It really is the best. The use of that tea will become more apparent later on. And my main complaint with Celadon City's buildings, you can't run inside of them. This is as fast as the game will allow me to go. Ah, this is gonna suck. Yeah, I don't even feel like walking across this floor. Let's just go all the way to the roof. And we still can't run up here. What's the danger? You might run and fall. Wow, this place got a lot bigger. And there's no clouds in the sky. There's not even a sun. How does the Pokemon world survive? Alright. So there's nothing to do on the roof, apparently. So now it's time to go all the way back down and leave. Are you not entertained with me walking? Okay. You may have noticed this little passage right, right over here. We can use this to get behind the building. But first, I'm paranoid. There's gotta be something here. There's really just nothing there. There's no hidden item or anything. God damn you, game. Anyway, this path right here will let us enter the building from the back. So we can start climbing up to the top floor this way. And we can make it to this building, which is... I know everything! Well then. There is nothing I do not know, like I wrote on the blackboard. I know about the world of Pokemon in your Game Boy Advance. Boom! The fourth wall. Look at the fourth wall. You've knocked it over, you've set it on fire, it's dead. Get together with your friends and enjoy trading Pokemon. So, this guy here will say he knows everything, including trading Pokemon. Does he know how to prevent a burglary? I think not. So, we just steal an Eevee. And, believe it or not, this is actually the next member of my team. Eevee, in case you don't know, can evolve into a lot of different Pokemon with a lot of different types. And what I'm going to name my Eevee is... Corolla. For no other reason, aside from I was thinking of a name for what I wanted to make this thing into, and I really couldn't think of anything, but Corolla sounded cool, so I'm gonna go with it. That nickname doesn't give away too much information about what I'm gonna be evolving my Eevee into, but you'll find out later on this episode, so stay tuned. Yeah, I played Cave Story, I stole a lot of stuff, I can outsmart that guy. So now I've stolen from him. It's time to leave yet again. Doesn't appear like we can enter any of these buildings from the back though. Here's an item for us, an ether. Ether is basically like a potion except for your moves and PP. So, for example, how my Pikachu's Thunderbolt ran out when I was using that. Use an ether on Thunderbolt and it'll get all of its um, move points back. Or power points as I think they like to be called. The people inside of this building are stuck and they'll never see- Okay, I'm done with that joke. I've already made that joke. Find what you need, the Celadon Department Store. So this is the big um, department store that lady was telling us about in the Underground Passage. There are two entrances to this place, and I honestly do not know why, because they both end up in the exact same room. Pointless design. This is basically Celadon City's Pokemart, and it is a big one. There are a lot of different floors to this place, and a lot of different stuff to on each floor. So, let's look at the bottom floor. Hello, welcome to Celadon Department Store. The board on the right describes the store layout. First floor, service counter. Second floor, trainer's market. Third floor, TV game shop. Four floor, wise man gifts. Yes, drugs! Rooftop square, vending machines. Because vending machines need an entire floor to themselves, let's just be honest. 
So you have two options of getting around this place. You can take the stairs, or there's an elevator which will take you directly to whatever floor you decide to go to. Me, I'm going to be incredibly lazy and just use the elevator to go up to the second floor. Which was the trainer's market. I believe this is where you're going to be buying all your potions and status healing stuff. Or, never mind, TMs. This is where you buy TMs to teach moves to your Pokemon. Thanks for making me look like an idiot game. You can buy a TM28 Dig here, which is, as I've shown off with Amakonite, is a really good ground type move. TM31 Brick Break. This is a really good fine type move. We already picked one up on the SSN, so I don't feel the need to buy it. Most of the TMs that the shopkeepers will sell you in the uh, department store aren't too good. Here's where you buy all your just typical Pokemon Center stuff, or Pokemon stuff. Might as well buy that Super Repel I wasted on Route 8. And replenish, or not replenish, sorry. Just repurchase some Super Potions I used up on Dynamo. And the Revive. Long out, outings used by Revive. Thanks for the incredibly useful information. Okay, on to the third floor. TV Game Shop. Oh hi, I finally finished Pokemon. You beat the game, really? Not done yet? How about I teach you a good move? The move I have in mind is Counter. Not like the one I'm leaning on, mind you. Yes or no? Um, well, yes? Was that even a question? This move can be learned only once, is that okay? Alright, why not? Counter is a bit of an interesting move. It's a fighting type move. Basically, if the opponent uses a physical move on you and you use counter, you'll do, I think, double the damage they did back to you. But it only works if the move they're using against you is a physical move. So, for example, if you're up against a Pikachu and it uses Thunderbolt, counter will not work. I don't really find counter and its equivalent mirror move, or maybe, no, mirror code, that, um, that useful, since it only works for this special or a specific type of attack. I am messing up speaking. So, this kid will tell you about how Pokemon, or some Pokemon can evolve, you trade them. My buddy's gonna trade me as Kangaskhan for my Haunter. I wouldn't do that. Kangaskhans are extremely rare in this game. You can identify Pokemon you get in trades by their ID numbers. ID numbers, whenever you catch Pokemon, in fact, I'll show you here with Dynamo. You may notice their ID know 5 or 05439. If I were to trade away one of my Pokemon, then it would always keep the ID number so they can identify it was one of my Pokemon. Nothing you really have to worry about in the single player game, though. That's all there is to on that TV store. Express yourselves with gifts, wise man gifts. So, this is apparently sort of a gift uh, floor. And this is actually really useful. Right here, you can buy three. Or you can buy a few things. You can buy Poke Dolls, which will allow you to free, uh, flee from any wild Pokemon. This is helpful in Pokemon like Dugtrio and Diglett that have abilities such as Area Trap, where you can't just run away from the fight. Retro Mail, which is completely useless to me. Now these things: Fire Stones, Thunder Stones, Water Stone, and Leaf Stone. These stones, like you saw me use a Moon Stone on Econite, for example, these will help certain Pokemon evolve. And I'm actually going to buy two of these because a lot of my team for this game evolves using stones. Only buying a Thunderstone, because I'm pretty sure it's obvious which team member of mine needs that. And a Waterstone. And I just completely ruined the supply of the surprise of what my Eevee will be evolving into. But you know what? I haven't tortured myself enough in a while. It's been a while since I've had to change the sidebar and torture myself with vid video editing. So, let's get some evolutions going on. It's finally time to evolve Dynamo. Screw you, Ash Ketchum. Booyah! So, our Pikachu evolved into a Raichu. Listen, Surge had, had one, now I want one. Let's just quickly have a look at his stats now. Yeah, that's a pretty decent improvement, especially on the speed there, holy crap. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you'll be outspeeding a lot. 
Interestingly enough, a Conite still has higher special attack than you, but I'm sure that'll improve in a few levels times. Or a few levels time. And now it's time for Corolla. Yay! Lots of evolutions. Evolutions galore. So yes, my water type Pokemon for this LP will be a Vaporeon. Probably one of my favorites of the evolutions. Obviously she doesn't have, or he, sorry, I'm gonna get that really mixed up now. He doesn't have any water type moves to use just yet. But thankfully Misty gave us a TM for Water Pulse. So I see no reason not to slap that on him right now. Vaporeon just has such a feminine look, it'll be kind of confusing calling it a him. Eh, Helping Hand is only really useful in double, in double battles, so I don't feel the need to keep that on you. I put a disc on your face and you learn moves. Eh, let me see if there's anything else I can actually teach you right now. Eh, it doesn't really look like it. Alright. So we now have a fully evolved uh, Pikachu with Raichu, and we also have a Vaporeon. Lovely. And drugs, yay! Unfortunately, by drugs they mean such items as HP up, protein, iron. If you're not familiar with EVs and IVs, which I've been talking about a little bit earlier, EVs are a Pokemon's base stats. It's really confusing, so if you want to learn more about it, just look it up. But basically, these will help your Pokemon get more EVs of a certain stat if you're trying to train them up for competitive battling. Obviously, just by the nature of what I've been doing so far in this Let's Play, that can't happen. And EV training Pokemon in the Let's Play is just a really bad idea. And this guy will sell you stuff such as X attacks and X defense. I spoke about these a little bit back before, um, I think it was in part 10. But basically, when you use one of these in battle, it'll temporarily raise the stat of a Pokemon. So that's all there is to on floor 5. And now for the rooftop where the vending machines are held. They're dangerous weapons of war. The vending machines are actually really useful because they sell items such as fresh water, soda pops, and lemonades. These are basically like really good potions except for a lot cheaper. For example, a soup potion only restores um, 50 hit points, and there's 700 Pokey each. Lemonade just restores 60 and only 350 Pokey each, so yeah. I'm probably gonna just wait, sit here and waste the rest of my money on buying lemonades, because I feel like this is totally worth it. So I'm just gonna cut ahead to when I have no money left, pretty much. Uh, yeah. I think that says 8 Pokey, so I am completely rich. Not thirsty, yeah, I won't be for a while. Other things have been just on the rooftop. I'm pretty sure if you talk to this guy. Or maybe it's this one. Come here, little person. Give her a drink? Sure. I bought a fresh water, which was the cheapest thing you can buy in there, so I'm just gonna give this to her. Cause she'll give you a TM. TM16, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, light screen. It'll weaken the power of special attacks used by the opponents in battles. It lasts five turns and it affects your entire team. In fact, I'm actually curious whether or not I can teach that to Corolla, because that might be useful in the upcoming gym fight. Can I? No, I can't. Dynamo Kalona, though, that's kind of interesting. Do I have any moves that you don't really need? Eh. I feel fine keeping all those moves, actually. I know there's Pokemon I'll be catching later on that can learn that anyway. It'd probably be more, more fitting to have it on them. Alright, and I'll just ride the elevator back down. So I've now shown the entirety of the sh um, shopping center. Or the department store, rather. Whatever you want to call it. So, let's leave this place. <clears throat> I got my coughing in Cinnabar. 
It's, really, it's usually nice, but it breathes poison when it's angry. Well, what else would you expect from a poison type Pokemon? Now that the department store is out of the way, let's look at some other significant buildings here in Celadon. This is the arcade. What do you do in an arcade? You waste a lot of money. Thankfully, I already beat the game to it. So here, from the slate, you can buy coins, and using the coins, you can play on these machines. I'll show it off later in this episode when I have some more money, because I'm probably going to end up selling something. And when you play on the machine and you get a lot of coins, you can come into this building and exchange those coins for prizes. A coin case is required. I'll probably have to talk it out together. Obviously, before you can buy any coins, you'll need a coin case. So let's go grab one of those. Um, that building doesn't look suspicious at all. Let's just ignore all the Team Rocket grunts walking around. So this house right here is actually a restaurant. Go ahead and laugh. I'm flat out busted. I feel your pain, dude. No more slots for me. I'm going straight. Here, I won't be needing this anymore. So this angry dude will give you a coin case. Using this, you'll be able to hold coins and exchange them for prizes when you get a lot of them. And might as well find out what's going on here with all these rocket grunts and that old man. Chief, we shipped out 2,000 more Pokemon as slot prizes again today. Hey, 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 the slots are just real in the dough big time. Don't touch the poster at the game corner. Okay, I'll listen to you. There's definitely not going to be any kind of suspicious secret switch underneath there. Nope. Since you said so, Mr. Rocket Grunt, I believe everything you say. Yeah. We'll be checking that out a bit later. For now, though, I'm going to go back in here and sell something. Because I want to get some coins and waste the money. Yeah. I've been holding on to that Stardust for a while. And that, since there's no use aside from being sold for love money... We might as well just give it up now. Stardust. Thousand pokey for this dust. Why not? Now I just have to slowly make my way back out. Okay. Let's go buy some coins. And I'll change my name to Gambler, and I'll change my name to Rich, because that's fitting. So right here, I'll buy 50 coins, and I'm pretty sure this lady is... Yeah. What is your purpose in life? Just to tell people, don't talk to me, talk to the guy over here. Shouldn't you just get fired, and then this guy can move to the middle, and uh, whatever. Anyway, now I have 50 coins, let's play on the slot machine. So, uh, no. How do I put in coins? How, what's the, uh, okay, I see. So, press down to put in your coin. Put in free coins, press down three times, and then press A to stop the machines. Obviously, get, obviously if you get three of the matching things in a row, you get some coins. I was kind of close on getting free slow pokes and free sevens there. Obviously, this is probably not the most effective way to get coins, and more effective would just be to buy them straight out. And uh, what did I get there? I don't even know, actually. Obviously, every time you get um, that little fanfare there, you've earned some more coins. And oh, I was so close. I hate you, game. What the? What, why do I keep getting that? I'm not complaining because it's getting me more coins. <sighs> this is very addicting. I'm sorry. Interesting enough, the coin machines actually completely disappeared in 5th um, gen. I'm pretty sure the reason for this was a bunch of parents were complaining about gambling being in a kid's game. In Hard Gold and Soul Silver, actually, they completely removed the slots in the English version. Oh, hey, I got free sevens. Give me all the coins, and oh god. I just realized that payout. So, uh. Uh, this is gonna take a while. Yeah, in Pokemon Hard Gold and Soul Silver, the English versions actually completely didn't have any slots at all. They replaced it for some stu stupid like Minesweeper kind of game. I would have, from what I've heard, actually, the Japanese versions of Hard Gold and Soul Silver actually still have the slot machines in them. So, how was your day today? 
There we go. And that seems like a fitting place to end this. Goodbye, slot machine. Before we leave, though, I'm guarding this poster. Go away, or else. Why would you be guarding a poster? This it's not like there's a switch behind it or anything. Oh, you have eradicate. That's nice. That gives more experience than just straight stupid radishes. And what's your other Pokemon? A Zubat. Let's test out our new um, Raichu. And also just hit me, I should probably start training up Corolla. He has some catching up to do with the rest of the team. I don't know whether I want to train him off camera or do it some later time later in this episode. I know for a fact in the next episode we'll be doing a lot of fights against Rocket Grunts. Oh my god, he can teleport! It's not like there's a secret staircase here that only appears if you flip the secret switch, right? Nah, of course not. I'm not suspicious at all. Okay, now I have a coin case. We can check out what prizes we could get from getting a lot of coins. We exchange your coins for prizes. Which prize would you like? So this lady here will sell you a smoke ball, miracle seed, charcoal, mystic water, and a yellow flute. Miracle seed will raise the power of grass type moves in battle, charcoal raises fire type moves, and mystic water raises water type moves. Smoke balls make so you can escape from any wild Pokemon fight. And yellow flute, I'm actually forgetting what this does. Correct me if I'm wrong on this in the comments, but I'm pretty sure the yellow flute will, can, will cure you from confusion. Um, yeah, this person right here. This way you can buy Pokemon. She'll sell you an Abra for 120 coins, Clefairy for 750 coins, Pinsir, which is actually a really powerful Bug-type Pokemon, for 2,500 coins, Dratini, which is a Dragon-type Pokemon, which evolves level 50, so good luck if you're trying to train this thing up, though it is a good way to get one early on in the game, for 4,600 coins, and then a Porygon, which is a really weak Gnome-type Pokemon, which there's pretty much no purpose in buying this thing other than bragging rights, for 6,500 coins. Thankfully, that thing's price was lowered down from the original of 900 or 9,999 coins, which I'm pretty sure was the max amount of coins that coin case could actually hold. And then this person right here will sell you TMs. I'm pretty sure TM13 is Ice Beam. This is Flame or Iron Tail. I'm sorry. TM24 is Flamethrower. I'm so stupid. TM24 is Thunderbolt. Let's just all go through this together. TM30 Flamethrower. Shadow Ball. Screw you. TM35, plan for Boom! Yes, I suck at life. So she'll sell you TMs for Ice Beam, Iron Tail, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Flamethrower, which are all really powerful uh, moves of different elemental types. Okay. I have a scientist standing here. Oh, what am I to do? Someone stole our Silph Scope. The thief came running this way, I'm sure of it. But I lost sight of him. Where'd he go? Did he go down a mysterious staircase? It can only be accessed by flipping a mysterious switch. Of course not. Okay. One last building to check out over here. Pokemon? No, this is a hotel for people. We're full up, unfortunately. I'm on vacation with my brother and boyfriend. Settled on such a pretty city. Why? Why did she bring her brother? Well, Pat Pat, I feel sorry for you. Clearly, you're not getting the vacation you wanted. Yippee, I'm on vacation. My sis brought me along. Awesome. Not awesome for her brother. Her boyfriend, sorry. Yeah, no. Just, just no. Okay. And there's only one place left to check out. Which, if we cut down this tree, you murderer. Celadon City has a gym. Celadon City Pokemon Gym. Leader Erica, the nature loving princess. We'll be taking on this gym at a later time. Better file. So we fully explored Celadon City, we evolved uh, Dynamo, and we got our, our fourth member to the team. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've done quite a lot this episode. So, I'm gonna leave it off here. Next time Pokemon Leaf Green, we'll have to go against what that rocket grunt told us, and check out the mysterious poster that's on the wall, and totally not find a secret switch and go down the secret stairs. 
No, because that's never going to happen. I totally believe the rocket grunt. He'd never lie to me. Yeah. See you guys then.